Let us now complete the proof of this amazing and amazingly important property. In an earlier video, we proved this property in the special case when A is an elementary matrix. So in order to complete the general proof, we only need to remember that any square matrix can be represented as a product of elementary matrices. Well, actually, in order for that statement to be entirely true, we need to restrict it to non-singular matrices. Only non-singular square matrices can always be represented as a product of elementary matrices. But that's good enough for us, because when A is singular, this identity clearly holds. When A is singular, AB is also singular. Take a moment to remind yourself why that's true. And so both sides of this identity are zero. So we can concentrate on the case when A is non-singular and can therefore be represented as a product of elementary matrices. And if A is this product of elementary matrices, then AB is the following product. And then the determinant of AB equals the determinant of this long product. Now let's think of this long product as E1 times the rest of the product. And because E1 is an elementary matrix, we can legitimately apply this formula. And this determinant becomes the determinant of E1 times the determinant of the rest of the product. And now we can apply this formula again, this time to E2, an elementary matrix, and the rest of the product. And we can continue with this reasoning, with this reasoning until the entire determinant is broken up into the individual determinants. And now we can combine all of the elementary matrices together by applying this formula in reverse, by going from the product of determinants to the determinant of the product. But we need to be careful. We need to go from right to left because this formula has only been established for elementary A's, not B's. So what we're going to do first is annex E sub n minus one to E sub n, and then we'll annex the next matrix and the next, and then eventually E3, E2, and E1. And at the end, we'll have the determinant of the product of the individual elementary matrices. Here we go. All right. And of course, the product of the elementary matrices is A. So we have the determinant of A times the determinant of B. And this completes the proof for general A and B. And now this important piece of the matrix algebra puzzle is firmly in place.